This is an instructional video about how to collect a venous blood gas sample and the proper handling of the sample immediately after obtaining the blood and just prior to performing the blood gas analysis. Follow your local hospital procedures to prepare the patient and collection site for obtaining the blood sample. Arterial blood may be difficult to obtain due to a patient's diminished pulse rate or low blood pressure, whereby a venous blood collection represents a viable option. Venous samples for blood gas analysis may be obtained from a peripheral vein by venipuncture, or particularly for patients in the intensive care unit, from a central venous catheter or from the distal port of a pulmonary artery catheter, which is referred to as a mixed venous sample. Typically, the antecubital veins are the common draw site for venipuncture. Draw the sample slowly within less than one minute of applying the tourniquet. A peripheral venous sample is suitable to determine the acid-base balance of a patient and to monitor the acid-base balance trends or to screen for systemic acidosis. In addition, electrolytes, metabolites, hemoglobin, and the dishemoglobin variants may be reported on a venous sample. However, venous oxygen values may be different from the arterial blood oxygenation status. Many patients in the intensive care unit have a central venous catheter from which venous blood can be easily obtained for testing. Attention should be taken and reported as to the site of the catheter placement, such as a jugular, subclavian line, a pick, or femoral line. The oxygen exchange in the various regions of the body can lead to extreme differences of the values. This information is critical and aids the clinician in the interpretation of the results. When it comes to mixed venous sample analysis, blood is collected from an indwelling catheter in the pulmonary artery, typically referred to as a Swan-Gantz catheter. The blood obtained from the pulmonary artery catheter is used for the dynamic diagnostic evaluation and management of the critically ill patients. When mixed venous blood gases from the pulmonary artery are combined with arterial blood gas measurements, the results frequently clarify the cardiopulmonary status and assist in determining appropriate therapeutic procedures to be initiated. Blood gas analysis is performed to test vitals in critically ill patients. Blood gas testing gives information on pH, the gases, electrolytes, metabolites, total hemoglobin, cooximetry, and neonatal total bilirubin. Ensure you have all the materials you need to draw the patient's sample. Depending on the type of venous sample drawn, materials may include a heparinized syringe with a filter cap, a central line kit or pulmonary artery catheter kit, a saline flush syringe, an empty waste syringe to clear the CVC line, alcohol or decontaminant wipe, and dressing, just to name a few of the items. The syringe used for blood gas analysis should include dry, electrolyte-balanced lithium heparin as the preferred anticoagulant in a concentration of approximately 23 international units per milliliter of blood. Before obtaining the venous sample, confirm the patient's identity. Follow your hospital directives for the proper protocol when obtaining a blood gas sample by venipuncture or from either a central line or a pulmonary artery catheter. Clean the venous blood draw site or the central line cannula port. Let it dry. Do not use a cleaning wipe that contains quaternary ammonium substance, such as benzalkonium, as it may affect the electrolyte parameters reported, particularly sodium. Perform a saline flush and attach the waste syringe and remove the initial fluid from the central line or the pulmonary artery catheter. The amount of fluid that needs to be withdrawn varies with the line system used. Remove and discard the waste syringe. Attach the heparinized syringe to the line cannula port and slowly withdraw the desired volume of blood from the patient. Once the desired amount of blood is obtained without bubbles or frothing, remove the syringe from the line cannula. Attach the filter cap on the lure tip of the syringe 
and hold the syringe vertically and gently tap the syringe so that air bubbles are forced to the top. Expel any air bubbles into the filter cap. Mix the sample thoroughly by rotating your wrist back and forth for a minimum of 20 seconds. This helps to dissolve the heparin and minimize clot formation in the syringe. Label the syringe with the patient ID and immediately transport the sample to a Siemens Health & Ears blood gas system. Follow a two-step mixing process. First, by rotating your wrist back and forth and then rolling the syringe between your hands about 10 times. Remove the cap from the syringe and expel the first few drops of blood into a gauze pad. Present the sample to the analyzer and start analysis. Recognize that a sample containing blood clots should not be used on the blood gas analyzer because it can affect not only the accuracy of the patient results, but also negatively impact the operation of the blood gas analyzer. The patient's blood gas results will be ready within 60 seconds. Remove the syringe from the analyzer, reattach the filter cap, and debubble the sample. If you need to repeat the test, remix the sample prior to analysis. According to the CLSI guidelines, blood gas testing should be completed within 10 minutes and not longer than 30 minutes after drawing the sample. If testing is delayed longer than 30 minutes, samples should be placed in an ice slurry and will require additional mixing prior to analysis. Dispose of the syringe according to the hospital guideline. Proper sample handling, mixing, and time to analysis helps to ensure accurate patient results.